Well, we're in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, I've never really told you this, but every day when we get back from our ride, um, among the many amazing things that our crew does is they, they have uh, bottles of water like this. It's the same bottle every day for the environmentally minded, be included. Uh, and we basically drink at least one of these from the time we get back from our ride until breakfast the next morning, as you can see. Uh, it's 9.48 p.m. And I'm, and I'm over halfway done. I'm a goal-oriented person. But this, um, literally, if we didn't do this, I can't even imagine how we could ride every day. This just helps the body in so many ways. And um, it's pretty fascinating. Anyway, um, we did our afternoon dedication from Geiger, Alabama. We're in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, the famous blues guitarist and songwriter uh, Jimmy Rogers uh, is thought to have been born here in Meridian. There's some discrepancy about it. Uh, and later in his life, he signed documents that said he was from Geiger, Alabama. The great news is we've been in both of these cities today. We shot our afternoon dedication in Geiger, which basically isn't there anymore because a tornado leveled it. Um, and if there was a town, we didn't see it. Um, and and now we're here. This is just such an incredible area. I mean, the uh, the the people when they came to this continent, we think of New York, we think of Boston, we think of Philly and D.C. and and the Carolinas and Virginia and West Virginia. That's amazing stuff. But also, people came here uh, just as early, and in some cases even earlier. Um, the the um, girl the all girls Catholic school that Joanne went to in New Orleans is the oldest uh, all girls Catholic school on the continent. So you know people were definitely coming in from the port of New Orleans, which is a beautiful um, uh, uh, area. Yeah, you know, they would come in, uh, I assume through the Delta, and they'd come up the river to New Orleans, and then obviously this whole area got populated by people. Um, sadly. Sadly, uh, but but um, truly, this area uh, was 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 developed by people who had money, who were largely from Europe. And uh, when I say developed, I mean uh, this area was farmed by uh, people from Europe. Uh, tobacco, cotton. I mean, you literally see cotton flying around in the air when we're riding. We've seen tobacco uh, being dried in barns for for two weeks now. And of course, the labor that those people used back in those days, in the 15, 16, 17, uh, 1800s, was, was uh, slave labor. People were brought over from Africa. They were brought right into the, into the Mississippi Delta. They were brought up the, uh, uh, up the Mississippi River, and, and they were brought to places like this, which is 250 uh, or so miles from New Orleans. And... Um, and so by the time our uh, parents and grandparents came around, some of the people on this ride are old enough to remember this, uh, the Civil Rights Movement happened, and that was when the old way uh, of, of cities in America, uh, many of which happened to be in the South, uh, clashed with the, the burgeoning new thought that people should uh, be treated equal, uh, for real, not just uh, on paper. And in this town where we're sitting right now, Meridian, was uh, one of the many hotbeds of the civil rights movement. There were people coming down from the north, um, spreading uh, literature, spreading information about the, uh, the, the new political uh, uh, forces that were at work to, to try and even the playing field between um, uh, white people and African American people. And, and there was a, a, a very terrible murder here in Meridian uh, that, that was uh, not really solved. The guy who did it got away with it until 2005 when DNA testing was, was, was brought onto the scene. Uh, a guy who killed three civil rights workers here in Meridian was actually convicted in 2005 and put in prison. This is just an amazing area. Um, absolutely amazing. People people showing up for what they believed in um, and changing the world literally in, um, in this town. 
Um, I'm sure that the hotel we're sitting in right now uh, was not here back then, but but it's just it's just amazing to ride around here. Tonight um, we dedicate our resting hours to a um, an incredible little boy who's from sort of this area of the country, uh, Caleb Wan. He he was from Fort Myers, Florida, which which uh, is a state we rode across on Pub Love Across America in 2009, and um, Caleb was diagnosed with cancer in August of 07. Um, he had a very specific form of, of ALL leukemia, and uh, he um, went into intensive treatment, chemo, full body radiation, a bone marrow transplant. I mean, full body radiation is about the most serious thing you can put a body through. Uh, to be radiated from head to toe is a very, very serious thing, particularly as a, uh, as a three-year-old little guy. Um, all of his treatment went down at Duke, and um, his family actually moved up to Durham, North Carolina from Fort Myers. They relocated so that they could just be right near the hospital. Uh, this is something we always have to remember with kids' cancer. When a, when a child is diagnosed with cancer, an entire family is diagnosed with cancer. It's not like you can just put your child on a plane with one of those tags around his, his neck and send him up for treatment. I mean, you gotta be there, and, uh, and of course you wanna be there. Um, only four days after the family returned to Florida uh, in March 2008, Caleb's cancer uh, came back. It was called a relapse in the cancer world. And, and his parents knew at that time that there was no treatment protocol for uh, a child who relapses so close to a bone marrow transplant. Um, this is a situation that Joanne and I found ourselves in where when Pablo's cancer recurred, uh, from his kidneys where it originally was to his lungs uh, on treatment we knew that, that that he was put into a very very narrow uh, margin of children uh, with Wilms tumor in his case uh, for which there was there are no survivors and, and that of course was uh, the case with Pablo as it as it was with our friend Caleb Juan um, he went into hospice care and um, had only 15, what his parents say, were good days uh, before his complications uh, truly uh, set in from his recurrence of cancer. His last words to his dad were, were and I'm reading off the page here because this is very important. His last words were, Yav you. And he, and, and, and he said, as a little boy, Yav. Y U V. Um, he said that to his dad in one of his in one of his few responsive moments during that uh, very late period of his life. And on March 28th of 08, um, Caleb took his last breath, um, lying next to his mother at home, only 11 days after his fourth birthday. And so, um, to Caleb Juan, to his parents Rob and Monique. We extend our hearts to you. Every rider who's on this ride right now, this week, our riders from week two, our riders from week one, all of our crew, everybody from the Pablo Foundation, from the office, from our board of directors, all of our friends on Facebook, all of our Twitter followers, all the people out there who have donated a penny or or a thousand dollars or more, we are all saying we respect you and we honor your journey. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, we will hold you very close in our hearts tonight. We, uh, we also want to acknowledge that, um, Rob and Monique have started a foundation that, that raises money for childhood cancer research and provides relocation assistance to families, uh, uh, which is something that's very near to their heart, seeing as how they had to go from, from Fort Myers up to Durham. Uh, their organization is called Caleb's Crusade, so uh, please look them up online. Uh, we, we support them. Uh, we support all pediatric cancer foundations. 
uh, particularly those that are set up by, by cancer parents. Um, and uh, we are saying good night to you from Meridian, Mississippi. We're in very northern uh, part of Mississippi. We're, we're just north of where Morgan Freeman lives. Uh, an incredible actor. And uh, we're looking forward to going from the top of this state to the bottom of this state. And, and if you can imagine, on our very last day, we'll start in Mississippi, and then we'll cross over the Louisiana state line and proceed west into New Orleans. Um, so that's, you know, when the very, very tail end of our journey here. We'll end up in New Orleans Friday. We'll end up at New Orleans uh, Children's Hospital uh, 2 p.m. on Friday. Um, what we're doing here is a real honor and we honor our feelings and we honor the children and the parents, uh, the communities of those children uh, as we do what we're doing. So thank you for watching. Uh, whether you're watching uh, today, this week, or in 2020, these videos will be here forever as long as YouTube is in business, uh, which appears to be like looking good for them. Uh, these videos will be here. Um, the, the, the love and the respect that we are transmitting through this camera and into your computer, wherever you're watching, uh, is heartfelt and sincere. Um, and uh, the Pablo Foundation um, respects everybody who is going through pediatric cancer in whatever way you're doing it, whether you're a friend, a parent, a classmate, mom or dad, I don't care what it is. Uh, we're with you, and I'm saying good night.